Hello, I'm Dawn Compton, the pastor at Main Street United Methodist Church, and I want to share with you our weekly Wednesday Word. Um, I'm doing it from home this week, so it's a little bit different. And I wanted to share with you still some more thoughts on game changers. And so this week, I wanted to talk about the Lego company, the Lego toy company. My family loves Legos. Legos began in 1932 um, by a Danish family, and they began making all kinds of toys, but eventually narrowed it down to the Lego bricks that we know today. In 1964 is when they began using the plastic that is still being used today. I want you to see right here, this is one of our Lego uh, displays. It is a fishing hut, and my uh, oldest son put this together that we have, that we display out, and then this is my Lego display. It is a scene from the Big Bang Theory. We love Legos, and they were a game changer in the toy industry, and they can be a game changer for your foot if you step on any of those bricks. But they are a lot of fun and they can be, uh, elicit a lot of creativity in children's lives. They're little small bricks, but they can be game changers. God can use so many different things to be game changers in our lives. It doesn't have to be huge, big things. It can be small things. The story in John 6 tells us of a little boy who had some small things. He had five loaves and two fish, and he was able to share those items to be a game changer for all those 5,000 plus people and feed all of them. God can use whatever we have, whatever little things that we might think are, are not even worth much, and uses those to be game changers in other people's lives. So I hope this week you will think about how you can offer what you have, your gifts, your resources, to be game changers for other people, game changers for the love of Jesus Christ. Just have a couple of announcements I want to lift up to you. I want to remind you that I am uh, taking sign-ups for our new small group study that is going to begin on October 1st. It's about if moving uh, from our uh, if only regrets to what if possibilities with God. If you want to participate, let me know. We will have in-person small groups at 10 in the morning, and we're going to do it by Zoom at 7 p.m. Let me know so I can make sure I get you a book for that series. Also, I want you to continue to lift up our after-school program. We are in our second week, and things are going well, and the children are adjusting, and our teachers are adjusting, and we're having a good time with that. So please continue to lift that up in prayer. I also want to let you know that the first Sunday in October, we are going to have World Communion Sunday. We're going to have an outdoor worship service at 4 p.m. and we'll be able to receive communion all together as a faith community. So put that on your calendar now and plan to come uh, that first Sunday in October at 4 p.m. to Worldwide Communion Sunday. This Saturday, September 19th, is annual conference, and we will be meeting. If you would like to participate and hear what's going on at annual conference, you can join us in the fellowship hall at 930. It is going to be via Zoom, but we can watch that, uh, sir, uh, that conference and those events and the decisions that are being made there together. If you would like to participate, if you've never been to annual conference, this will be a good time to do that. Our charge conference is on September 27th at 4.15 in the afternoon. Um, again, that is via Zoom. I uh, just wanted to make sure that it's on everyone who is uh, supposed to come to charge conference that you're aware of that and have that on your calendar. I will be sending out the Zoom link for that soon. If you have trouble with Zoom and aren't able to do that in your home, we will be allowing those to gather in the fellowship hall for anyone who would like to do that and can't uh, gather via Zoom. Have a great rest of the week. I look forward to worshiping with you this Sunday, either online or in person.
God bless.